நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. In the last video I explained about the house of Gemini and the effects of the sun in the house of Gemini and the effects of different star lots. In this video first of all I'm going to explain the effect of the moon in the house of gemini there is no inimical house for the planet moon the house lord of gemini which is mercury treats the moon as its enemy no mother hates her child in the same fashion the moon hates none so for those who were born as gemini rashi you have to make predictions based on the status of mercury in the natal chart for the natives of gemini ascendant or gemini rashi when the house lord of the gemini which is mercury is subhatwa then the native will be very knowledgeable the native's learning capability will be high the native will possess a good communication skill will be a good thinker and debater the native will excel in the fields related to the significance of mercury and will gain by investing his or her knowledge the native will earn the bread by good communication skills when the planet mercury is placed in gemini or virgo and in one of the kendra houses or quadrant houses that is first fourth seventh or tenth house from the ascendant then bhadra yoga is formed having said this if gemini is the first fourth seventh or the tenth house to the ascendant and mercury is placed in gemini then the native will have bhadra yoga well let me come back to the point let me explain the effect of the moon in the house of gemini a mother treats nobody as an enemy in the same fashion moon treats no house as an enemy the lord of the gemini that is mercury treats the moon as its enemy i often reiterate that when you want to assess the strength of the moon try to assess it based on the light energy of the moon When the moon is waxing moon or the full moon in the house of Gemini it is auspicious even if moon is amavasya moon in the month of ani that is jeshta that is mid june to july if moon is in conjunction or aspected by venus or jupiter then it is auspicious then there is no amavasya dosha when the sun or moon is strong and they are in conjunction it means it is no moon day that is amavasya so even though when the moon is amavasya moon in the house of gemini yet aspected by jupiter then it will not give bad effects in contrast to this when there is conjunction of sun moon and rahu in the house of gemini or when there is solar eclipse or lunar eclipse in the house of gemini then the moon in the house of gemini will affect the intelligence of the native because the moon which lost its light because of the eclipse or amavasya affects the house of gemini so when the moon has no light in the house of gemini it will affect the mind of the native moon is the significator of the mind and when it is in conjunction with saturn mars or rahu in the house of gemini the native will lose the thinking capability and will behave like a puppet of others will do whatever others dictate 
and will not possess independent thinking. This is the effect of Parvatva moon in the house of Gemini. The difference in the effects of the moon in Gemini is based on many factors such as whether the moon is alone or whether it is Subhatva or Parvatva etc. This is the way you have to predict the effects of the planet. You have to predict the effect of the planet on the basis of Subhatva and Parvatva of the planet rather relying on common statements of predictions. When you try to predict by following these steps, you will get great accuracy in your predictions and you can make intricate predictions as well. The next planet that I am going to explain about is Mars. When Mars resides in the house of Gemini, it is not favorable. I am going to share the reason that I have never told in my past videos. You have to understand the concept based on Bhavat Bhavam rule with respect to the position of Mars to its own houses. When Mars is in the house of Gemini, it loses its strength in the third house from its own house of Aries. And it also loses its strength in the eighth house from its another own house, which is Scorpio. Based on this concept of Bhavat Bhavam, Mars should not be positioned in the house of Gemini. Let me ask a question now. What is the antidote if Mars is in the house of Gemini? The answer is nothing but the parivartan of the planet Mars and Mercury. When Mercury is in the house of Aries or Scorpio and when Mars resides in the house of Gemini, then through parivartan it delivers benefits. I have been saying that for any ascendant whose lord is natural malafic, if it disappears from the ascendant house, it will do well. For example, let us say for Scorpio ascendant, there is parivartan of the house lord Mars and Mercury, that is when Mars, which is the malafic, is in the house of Gemini and when Mercury is in the house of Scorpio, Mars will deliver benefits. In other words, for Scorpio ascendants, when the Lord of the first house and the eighth house exchange their houses mutually, the ascendant Lord Mars will deliver benefits. Since the ascendant Lord is malefic, if it loses its strength in the eighth house from its own house Scorpio, it is favorable. So, when Mars is in Gemini and there is parivartan of Mercury and Mars, it will deliver benefits. To make further predictions, the concept of Bhavat Bhavam factors in depending on the ascendant. You have to check whether the Lord of the 6th house or the 8th house or the 12th house loses its strength in Gemini. If the Lord of the 6th or 8th or 12th house loses its strength in Gemini, it is favorable. To make a complete prediction, you have to consider Bhavat Bhavam, Subhatva and Pabhatva of the Bhava and Subhatva and Pabhatva of the planets. If only you combine all these concepts together, you will get to know how to make a prediction. The concept that I explain to you now is very intricate. I really share higher level of concepts of astrology. I am explaining the higher level concepts in a very simple way so that it will be a cakewalk for you in learning the concepts of astrology. You might initially have a lot of confusion as to how to combine a lot of concepts together to give a final prediction. You will understand the concepts when you listen again and again. By now you might have understood why certain houses are inimical to a planet and certain houses are friendly to the planet. 
In Gemini, when Mars is in the 8th house, from its own house Scorpio, or when it is in the 3rd house, from its own house Aries, it will reduce the significance of the Mars. I hope you get this point. So, when the support of the Mars or the significance of the Mars is not much needed for a particular ascendant, then the position of the Mars in the house of Gemini is favorable to the ascendant. You can do a simple research by applying this concept to the natives of all ascendants. Please remember that Gemini is the third house in the natural zodiac. Though it is generally said to be good, when Mars resides in the house of Gemini, the position of the Mars in the house of Gemini is not considered to be favorable. It is not favorable either to the Gemini house or to the Mars itself since it affects the significance of the Mars. Since the relationship status between Mars and Mercury is not good, the position of Mars in the house of Gemini is not favorable. So, when Mars is in the house of Gemini, the significance of both Mars and Mercury will be affected in the natal chart. Well, eventually let us see the antidote when Mars is in Gemini. It is nothing but the Subhatva of the Gemini house. In case, if Mars is in conjunction with Jupiter or aspected by Jupiter or aspected by a full moon or waxing moon, it will turn the native to be an authoritative person. The very same Mars when it is in conjunction with Jupiter or aspected by the waxing moon, the native will be a very authoritative person. So, you have to understand the concepts based on the Subhatva and Pabhatva strength. The next planet that we are going to discuss is Mercury. When Mercury is in its own house, that is in Gemini, and it is alone, then the native will be highly intelligent. The native will be very knowledgeable. Based on which house Gemini is to the ascendant, that is as per Bhavat Bhavam, Mercury in the house of Gemini will deliver its effects. The lone Mercury is very auspicious. When there is Parivartan of Venus and Mercury, that is, if Venus is in the house of Mercury and Mercury is in the house of Taurus, the Mercury will deliver more benefits. When there is Parivartan of planets, Mercury gets connected to the house of Gemini. Even when the Mercury is in conjunction with the Sun, remember Mercury is with its best friend in its own house and the planet will be very happy and will be ready to deliver benefits. Try to see the planets as human beings to understand certain concepts. Imagine the happiness of a guy who is in his own house with his best friend who is very close to him since childhood. Mercury will be in such a state to deliver the benefits. This is the very same status of Mercury in the house of Gemini when it is in conjunction with the Sun. Mercury in the house of Gemini is very auspicious whatever the criteria may be. When Mercury alone is in a good status in a natal chart without the affliction by another malefic planet, the native will earn his or her bread by investing the knowledge. This is a very important rule. For a better living, we need knowledge and flexibility as well. The lone Mercury in the Gemini without affliction will deliver its significance, which is flexibility. Mercury does not behave like Saturn. The Saturn will influence the native to be always adamant to justify whatever they say is correct. But the Mercury will let the native to bow down the head to make an apology for the mistake done. The planet Mercury will let the native to be very down to earth. When Mercury is connected to Gemini, the native will be humble enough to offer an apology
to those who are of even lower status than them. The native will be self-realized and knowledgeable. Having said all the above, the Lord Mercury in the house of Gemini is favorable. Even when the Mercury is in conjunction with the Sun in the house of Gemini, it is more favorable. If the Mercury is in conjunction with the Moon in the house of Gemini, the native will suffer because Mercury is in conjunction with the planet that it treats as an enemy. Imagine Mercury as a son who hates his mother. It resides along with the mother in its own house. This is the status of Mercury when it is in conjunction with the moon in the house of Gemini. The Mercury should not be in conjunction with Mars as the Mercury will be affected by the Mars. And if Mercury is in conjunction with Saturn, it is not considered to be good since it is Pabatua, though Saturn is a friendly planet. Mercury is like a good man and Saturn is like a rogue character. When a good man is friendly with a rogue person, the rogue will not have the ability to bring any benefits to the good man. This is how we have to understand the conjunction of Mercury and Saturn. When Mercury is in conjunction with the Sun, it will lead the native to be administrative and authoritative as the Sun is a very friendly planet to Mercury. When Mercury is in conjunction with Saturn, we cannot predict its behavior as it behaves erratically like a person of rogue character. When Mercury is in conjunction with Venus, it is the best favorable combination. If Venus and Mercury are in conjunction in the house of Gemini, the native will be highly knowledgeable. The native will be very thoughtful before doing any action. The conjunction of Mercury and Venus will bring such an effect. Mercury should not be in conjunction with Rahu. There are three categories of degrees of distance between the planets based on which we can make predictions. The three categories are 8, 13 and 22 degrees. When the Mercury and Rahu are conjunct within 8 degrees, the Mercury will be afflicted by Rahu very badly and Rahu will behave like Mercury during the major planetary period of Rahu. In contrast to this, during the major planetary period of Mercury, that is Mercury Dasha, it will deliver bad effects. It will drown the native in hardship. According to the intensity of the Pabatwa of Mercury, the major planetary period of the Mercury will affect the native. Therefore, when the Mercury is in the house of Gemini, it is favorable. And please try to understand the concepts of Pabatwa and the effects of the conjunction of the planets. At this moment, I would like to clarify one of the doubts of my subscribers. When Jupiter, which is the lord of a quadrant, is positioned in another Kendra house, that is quadrant, which is not its own house, people call it Kendra Dipati Dosha. The concept of Kendra Dipati Dosha was mistaken by many people and many of my subscribers wanted me to clarify this concept. I too have come across such general statements. Please try to understand the concept of Kendra Dipati Dosha. If the planet of the quadrant, which is a natural benefic, is in Kendra or quadrant and in its own house, then we call it Kendra Dipati Dosha. This is the only criteria for Kendra Dipati Dosha. There is a general statement like, if the lord of the quadrant is in another quadrant, it is Kendra Dipati Dosha. This is not true at all. These general statements prevent the people from availing the essence of original dictums. Kendra Dipati Dosha is when a natural benefic, which is the lord of a quadrant, resides in another quadrant house, that is Kendra, which is its own house. There are only three natural benefics. The most significant natural benefic is Jupiter 
and the second most significant natural benefic is Venus and then Mercury follows. To an ascendant, Venus can be the house lord of only one quadrant, whereas Jupiter and Mercury can be the house lord of two quadrants to the ascendant since they are house lords of dual signs. Having said the above, when the lord of a quadrant, which is a natural benefic, is in another quadrant with its own house status or is in ruling status, then it is Khendradipati Dosha. Don't pay attention to the statements like when the lord of one quadrant is in any other quadrant, it results in Khendradipati Dosha. Please don't make predictions based on these common statements. Please don't make predictions based on these common statements. Khendradipati Dosha will result if only a natural benefic, which is the lord of quadrant, is in another quadrant with own house status or ruling status. The next planet that I am going to explain is Jupiter. When Jupiter is in the house of Gemini, it is inimical house to Jupiter. There is an advantage of this position because Jupiter aspects its own house Sagittarius by its seventh aspect. It depends on which house Sagittarius is in a natal chart for the ascendant. For the natives of Aries ascendant, it is auspicious when Jupiter loses its light or strength in the third house from the Aries but aspects the ninth house to the ascendant which is Sagittarius because the ninth house is a house of fortune that delivers benefits to the native. Though the lord of ninth house loses its strength in the third house to the ascendant, since a natural benefic aspects its own house and strengthens the own house, it is auspicious. You have to understand this concept based on the following logic. The lord of the ninth house loses its strength in the third house to the ascendant, yet it aspects its own house and strengthens it. So, though Gemini is the inimical house to the Jupiter, it will be in a status to deliver benefits to the natives of Aries ascendant. Let me add another logic here. A noble man will never stoop low in any situation. Jupiter behaves the same way, so Though Jupiter is in the house of Gemini, the aspect of the Jupiter will bring benefits. In general, even if Jupiter is debilitated, the aspect of Jupiter will still have some strength and it will deliver benefits. If only Jupiter is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu, Jupiter loses its strength and it becomes Pavatva and the aspect of the Jupiter gets affected. This is the reason we say that when Jupiter is alone, the aspect of the Jupiter delivers benefits provided there is no connection of malafic. I often reiterate that even if Venus is debilitated, it should be alone to deliver benefits. Whether it is Jupiter or Venus, when they are debilitated, they will have the strength to deliver benefits. Even in the state of debilitation, Jupiter can render progeny and wealth to the native. Not everyone has Jupiter exalted in their chart. A debilitated Jupiter that has no connection with Malafic when it is not Pabatwa will be in a status to deliver its significance. What is the significance of Jupiter? Jupiter is the significator of wealth and progeny. Though Jupiter is debilitated in a natal chart, the native will have children and wealth. But the debilitated Jupiter must not be aspected by a malafic like Saturn. When Jupiter is in conjunction with Saturn or aspected by Saturn or in conjunction with Rahu, it will affect the significance of Jupiter. Even if Jupiter is in conjunction with Mars, the Jupiter will not be afflicted because Mars is 75% malafic and very friendly planet to the Jupiter. 
So, in this case, when Jupiter is alone in the house of Gemini and strengthens its own house Sagittarius by its seventh aspect, it will deliver benefits. Please consider Bhavat Bhavam to know which house Sagittarius is to the ascendant in order to make predictions. So, when Jupiter resides in the house of Gemini, even though it is residing at inimical house, it aspects its own house Sagittarius and when it is residing alone in the house of Gemini, without any connection of malafic, it will deliver benefits. So, when Jupiter is alone in the house of Gemini, it will deliver benefits. If the Jupiter is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu, it will not deliver benefits certainly. The next planet that I am going to explain is Venus. It is considered to be very auspicious when Venus is in the house of Gemini. When there is Parivartan of Venus and Mercury, that is when Mercury resides in the house of Taurus and Venus resides in the house of Gemini, both the planets become very strong. This is very auspicious for the native of Virgo ascendant, that is Kanya Lagna, as the lords of the ninth and 10th house exchange their houses mutually that delivers great benefits to the native. Venus is the lord of 2nd house and ninth house to the natives of Kanya ascendant, that is Virgo ascendant. Whatever the ascendant is, if Venus and Mercury are alone and they exchange their houses mutually, it is such a great benefit. The two great significances will be delivered by Venus and Mercury if they get Parivartan. The native is fortunate to enjoy completely the pleasures delivered by Venus and the knowledge delivered by Mercury, provided the Venus and Mercury is not Pabatva, that is, they should not be in connection with a malafic like Saturn or Rahu. The Venus and Mercury should not be aspected by malafics or should not be in conjunction with these two malafics. In general, the Venus or Mercury must not be in combusted or debilitated or an enemy status in order to give benefits during their respective major planetary period, that is Dasha. Gemini is the most friendly house for Venus, an auspicious house for Venus. Venus and Mercury are friends and they like each other mutually. Having explained the above concept, when Venus was alone in the house of Gemini, with no connection of malafic, it delivers great benefits. Whenever you want to assess the strength of a planet, try to apply the concept of Subhatva and Pabhatva. So, when Venus is alone in the house of Gemini, it is very auspicious provided it has no connection with Saturn or Rahu. More importantly, it should not be in conjunction with Mars. What will happen if Venus is in conjunction with Mars? Mars will get Subhatva and Venus will lose its light that is, it loses its strength. When Venus is in conjunction with Mars, the native will have a different taste in seeking marital pleasure. When the woman have the combination of Venus and Mars, she will not behave elegant. When we find this planet combination in a natal chart, the native will have a different idea in marital pleasure. I hope you will understand what I explained. I would like to add more points. When there is a conjunction of Venus and Mars, it should not be aspected by Saturn. In this case, Venus will lose all its strength. When Venus is in conjunction with Mars and aspected by Saturn through the third aspect or seventh aspect or tenth aspect, Venus status is dead. In this case, the relationship between the man and the woman the marital pleasure, the marriage life, etc. will be spoiled. In some cases, there will be delayed marriage. There will be a lot of problems in the marriage. If you observe the natal chart of the people who have late marriage, issues in married life, there will be a combination of Venus 
with one or more malefics such as Mars, Saturn and Rahu. As a significator of the marital pleasure, Venus should not be in connection with Saturn and Mars or in connection with Rahu. When Venus is in the house of Gemini and alone, the house is very friendly to the Venus. The house lord Mercury is also very friendly to the Venus. So, it is very auspicious when Venus is alone in the house of Gemini. In most cases, we can see in the natal chart, there is Parivartan of Venus and Mercury, that is Venus and Mercury exchange their houses mutually. The reason is that these two planets usually travel within close distance. So in most of the cases, the Venus in Rishabha, that is in Taurus, and Mercury in Mithuna, that is Gemini, will exchange their houses. When Venus and Mercury are alone in the houses, without Pabatwa connection, it is more favorable. Having said all the above, when Venus is alone in the house of Gemini, it delivers great benefits to the native. In order to get the complete prediction, you have to check which Bhava the house of Gemini is to the ascendant and the Subhatwa level of the Venus. The Venus will deliver its effects according to the house where it resides. The next planet that I am going to explain is Saturn. When Saturn is in the house of Gemini, it is good. Can you guess the reason behind this? Because the Saturn loses strength in the sixth house from its own house Capricorn. As per Bhavat Bhavam, when the Malafic loses its strength in the hidden houses, it is said to be good. The Saturn will lose its strength in the 6th house from its own house Capricorn and in the 5th house from its own house Aquarius. If the native is Capricorn ascendant and the Saturn loses its strength in the 6th house from its own house, it is very auspicious. When a malefic loses its strength in hidden houses, such as 6th house, or 8th house or 12th house in friendly status, then it brings greater benefits. In addition to this, if Saturn gets Subhatwa, then it is more auspicious. So when Saturn loses its strength in the 6th house from its own house Capricorn and resides in the house of Gemini, that is friendly house to the Saturn, it will deliver benefits. In addition, if the dispositor that is house lord of the Gemini, Mercury is strong, then it will deliver additional benefits. When there are planets residing in the house Gemini, they will deliver good effects when the house lord Mercury is exalted in the house of Kanya or Virgo. When a planet resides in a house whose lord is exalted, then the planet residing in the house will deliver its good effects. Because the planet gains strength when the house lord is exalted and the house of Gemini is friendly house to the Saturn and Saturn will do certain benefits. For the Aquarius ascendant, Saturn and Gemini, which is the fifth house from the ascendant, is not good because a malefic should not be in a trine. This is not favorable to the native of Aquarius ascendant. Since the house of Gemini is friendly house, though Saturn does not deliver adverse effects, the Saturn as a malefic will spoil the house effect where it resides. But to the native of Capricorn ascendant, when the Saturn loses its strength in the sixth house from its own house, it is favorable. Being in this state when it gets Subhatwa by connection of Venus or Jupiter, it will deliver great benefits. Saturn in the house of Gemini is favorable. Rahu should never reside in the house of Gemini. The auspicious houses for Rahu are Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn. Rahu should not reside in any houses other than these five houses. If Rahu resides in any dual sign apart from Virgo, it will not deliver good effects. 
and Rahu must not reside in another own house of the Mercury, which is Gemini. It will affect the knowledge of the person and it will affect the mind and the intelligence when it is more Pabatva. If Rahu is connected with Venus or Jupiter, it will deliver benefits during its major or minor planetary period, that is Dasha and Antar Dasha. When Rahu is in the house of Gemini and is connected with either Saturn or Mars, then the major or minor planetary period of Rahu will be very bad. Rahu with this criteria will deliver all the bad effects such as dispute, litigation, humiliation, deaths, diseases, accidents because the house is inauspicious to Rahu. The logic behind this concept is that when Rahu resides in Gemini, it resides in the house of 6th house Lord Mercury of the natural zodiac. Based on the ascendant in which house Rahu is residing, it will deliver its bad effects. Even if the house of Gemini is the third house to the ascendant or 11th house to the ascendant, Rahu will deliver bad effects. The house of Gemini is 11th house to the native of Leo ascendant. If Rahu is in the house of Gemini in connection with Saturn or Mars, then it will affect the native during its major or minor planetary period, that is Dasha and Antar Dasha. The house of Gemini will be the third house to the natives of Aries ascendant. In this case, many will predict the effect of the major or minor planetary period of Rahu as good. But when Rahu resides in Gemini house, in connection with the malefic like Saturn or Mars, it will make the native as a pauper. This is the reason behind why Rahu will not be able to deliver benefits though it is in 3rd or 11th house. Having said all the above, it is not favorable when Rahu resides in the house of Gemini. Let me put forward a question. What is the antidote for this situation? It is nothing but the Subhatva of Rahu. The house lord of the Gemini must be exalted in Virgo so that Rahu in Gemini can deliver favorable results or should be in conjunction with the natural benefit such as Venus, Jupiter or should be aspected by Venus or Jupiter or waxing moon. Even in this case, Rahu will deliver benefits to a certain extent but does not deliver to a greater extent like delivering crores of money. When Ketu resides in the house of Gemini, it is favorable to a certain extent. It is 60% beneficial and 40% not beneficial. The Ketu in Gemini house will deliver a neutral effect. I have already mentioned which houses are favorable to Ketu and which houses are auspicious to Rahu. If you want to know about this, watch my past videos. You should try to memorize all these. When Ketu resides in the Gemini house, it is good to a certain extent. When Ketu resides in the house of Mercury, it will not affect the Gemini house. Ketu will grow the intelligence and it will grow the tendency of research. When Ketu resides in the house of Gemini, during the major planetary period of Ketu, it will incline the native to be intellectual and to be research minded and to be able to explore the secrets of a domain etc. So when Ketu is in the house of Gemini, it is favorable. When Rahu resides in the house of Gemini, it must be in connection with Venus or Jupiter and should not be in connection with Saturn or Mars in order to deliver benefits. In any situation, when Ketu or Rahu is in connection with Saturn or Mars, it is not favorable. The Rahu in Gemini will deliver its effects based on the strength of the house lord Mercury. 
in the upcoming video we will see which planet dasha will be favorable to the natives of gemini ascendant and the best positions of the planets to deliver the benefits thank you the link of aditya guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video which is accessible by both ios and android users the link of the google app is also given in the description box that is available only for android users